Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're going to find out how to screen for increasing volume to uncover institutional buying. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Kevin Matris, our top stock screener here, to guide us through this week's screening process. So, unless I miss my guess, this sounds like a, kind of an interesting way to see not only what stocks are in favor, but what the big guns are doing, right. the institutional investors. Yeah, you know, I think this is one of the best ways to be able to find stocks on the move and stocks that are grabbing investors' attention. Uh, because if you think about it, if you're looking at a stock going up on increased volume, that shows that, uh, that there is increased buying, that shows increased demand, and it shows that it's a stock that has become quite popular, probably for a lot of valid reasons. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is that the individual investor doesn't really have the firepower to be able to move the needle when it comes to volume. The only people who really have the firepower to be able to do this is institutions, uh, and nothing can really get a stock moving more than institutional buying, and this is why we're focused on this today. And why would that be? That seems to be a complaint of a lot of individual investors. We can't make a difference. Well, you know, maybe they don't need to make a difference, or maybe they shouldn't even care about making a difference, because if you literally could move the market for every little thing you did, I mean, it would just be complete chaos on the street. Okay. But the reason why I believe the, uh, the institutional uh, uh, investing is such an important topic is because, first off, if you take a look at how they build a position, right, they are moving tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars into the market. Yep. So when you think about it, since they are making such massive purchases, it may take weeks, if not months, to be able to build a position. And given this kind of commitment, especially when you consider that if they decide to get out of that stock, it's going to be the same kind of lengthy duration. You're going to be talking about several weeks, to several months to get out. Mm -hmm. You can be pretty sure that these institutional investors have done their due diligence to make sure that these companies look pretty sound fundamentally. Now, again, that doesn't mean as uh, an individual investor you can just, you know, ignore your own uh, homework and your own analysis. You're still going to have to do your own analysis to make sure that this stock purchase fits your own personal style of trading. But since institutions are key drivers of the market, uh, and since a lot of the institutional holding data kind of comes with a lag, one of the greatest ways to be able to find institutional buying, which can really rally a stock, is to pay attention to that volume, and that'll put some fantastic companies onto your radar screen. And what kind of volume increases are we talking about here? Well, for me, I like to look at a minimum of two weeks of increasing volume. Okay, uh, I've done a lot of testing on this, uh, this matter, and I have found that really three weeks tests the best. If you start trying to string together four weeks, five weeks, oftentimes you're going to reduce your universe and you're not going to get the same bang for your buck. Uh, but, uh, but two or three weeks is, uh, is what you want to start with. And I try to exclude one week's uh, volume, you know, a big spike in volume, because oftentimes you can see one day within a week uh, skew a weekly volume chart. Mm -hmm. uh, so by getting the successive volume increases, this show is repeated buying, this shows accumulation, and this is what really gives the, uh, this, this volume setup its true value. Now, what we are looking at here is we're not talking about outrageous increases in volume. We're talking about something that is noticeable, like a 10% or 20% or 50% increase. But if you start looking at something that has, you know, like a tenfold increase in volume, this is not going to, uh, to help you out. And I've actually found that when you're looking at these massive volume spikes, oftentimes those can be turning points, uh, which can send the market in the opposite direction because it's just been exhaustive activity. Mm. So nonetheless, you want to be able to see Increasing volume on a weekly basis over two to three weeks, nothing crazy, just incremental, and that is a great way to be able to put some good stocks on your radar screen. All right, lay out those parameters for us. Okay, it's pretty simple. Uh, we are looking at, uh, we're combining price and volume together. 
So I want to see the price, the current price, greater than the price from one week ago. I want the price from one week ago to be greater than the price from two weeks ago. And I want the price from two weeks ago to be greater than the price from three weeks ago. So you do have interest. That stock is being supported by the, uh, the trade. Same thing with volume, right? Let Same thing with volume. <laughs> <laughs> so again, you want to see successive increases for the last three weeks. Now, to flesh out this screen, I've also added a couple of other things I put in the Zach's rank of less than or equals to three. So again, you do want to make sure that there is a good fundamental picture. And again, earnings estimates when it comes to fundamentals, earnings estimates and earnings estimate revisions is the most important thing to a stock. So you're really combining two uh, important elements. Then you'll see on this screen, I'm also looking at price greater than five, an average 20-day volume of greater than 100,000 shares. Mm -hmm. The price is really my personal preference. I just personally don't like buying stocks under $5. I will occasionally, but I prefer not to. But it's also interesting to note that a lot of portfolio managers won't buy stocks under five bucks as well. Some will, uh, but it's good to know that they uh, will oftentimes make a cutoff there as well. But if you do like low price stocks, just take that item out. And again, you still want to make sure that there's uh, a decent enough volume. 100,000 shares, in my opinion, is, uh, is like a minimum. Uh, because if you see, you know, 100 shares traded on one week and the previous week it was 50 shares, yeah, you've got a massive percentage increase, but who's going to buy that stock? Yeah. So, so you want to be able to put in some, uh, some interesting things just to make sure that you can get in and out of the stock easily. All right, let's see how this did. Stocks that came through the screen. There were were about 60 stocks that came through and it was really an interesting list uh, and again this is something that I am using right now but here's five that really stood out for me. You got DuPont Fabros, World Fuel Services, Polaris Industries, Plains Exploration and Torchmark and again all of these uh, these stocks are in different industries but it really is an interesting list all of these companies look good fundamentally. You're looking at, uh, at increasing earnings estimate revisions, but it looks as if you're, you're looking at institutional accumulation. Okay. Do you own any? Uh, not yet. Thought I wasn't going to ask that, <laughs> didn't you? If you want to see a text version of this week's Screen of the Week, by all means, get to our homepage, zax.com, if you're not there already. And uh, scroll down the uh, homepage till you get to Kevin's picture. Click on that headline. It'll take you right to it. And if you want to know more about the Research Wizard, that's the tool that Kevin uses to achieve all of these screens, then you should be looking at zax.com slash research wizard to find out more about that backtesting system. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.